Hi, everybody. I just wanted to jump on here really fast. I had no idea when I posted the video about the horse in pain um, and the two month update and progression of his rehabilitation that it would take off like it did overnight. Um, and so I know there was a lot of questions and people are talking about that I should do a series and break down the rehab and so on. But what you need to understand is that this horse was not a unique case, unfortunately. I often encounter horses that I always say I'm the last stop. And so many people bring their animals here because the mainstream training practices have quit working and the horse is displaying often dangerous and violent behaviors and then the owner doesn't know what to do. So when I start with a horse's rehabilitation, you have to understand that most of these horses have unintentionally been taught to be fearful of humans. And so even if we think about the logistics of like physio and body work and helping make adjustments, most of these horses are so defensive that even the simple act of trying to catch them or lead them winds up being kind of a traumatic event for them. So where I come in is I have to start with gaining that horse's trust because if mentally that horse is constantly looking to flee or avoid or get away or protect himself in big dramatic violent behaviors, there's no way that we're going to get near his body. And even if we do get near his body to make adjustments, he's going to be so full of physical tension um, and anticipating, you know, pain or, or humans, you know, causing more trauma that he's looking to avoid and get away. So even if a physical adjustment is made, it's not going to hold and it can actually do damage if the horse is in that hyper alert, hyper sensitive state. So part of the rehabilitation starts with the horse's brain just in being able to build their trust and their willingness to be caught and their willingness to be led and handled. And despite us touching them, and perhaps initially it may be uncomfortable, the feedback that the horse can give as far as where the, the painful spots are, where old trauma and injury are, the horse can communicate in a lot more, I'm going to say specific way when he's not in that hyper alert state. And so I know there are a lot of people who are saying, well, I was touching him and so it was a, like a fly twitching or a sensitivity. But what I was trying to show is there is a hypersensitivity when these horses are, are on high alert. And so, yes, does a horse's skin twitch when you touch it? Absolutely. But they don't typically twitch where their entire neck, shoulder, chest, knee, and belly or barrel area vibrate at the same time. When you see that hypersensitivity to things, it's a reflection that the nervous system is out of whack. Something's not quite right. Um, and again, with these rehabilitations, it's not just one thing. It's usually years of multiple factors, whether it's ill-fitting tack or whether it's harsh riding and training practices using severe equipment, putting these horses into unnatural positions and they're unbalanced and they're defensive towards the human's communication. So you have things like that. You have actual physical trauma, horses that are defensive about pressure and have been tied and they flip over and break their withers or do damage to their pole or lower sacrum. You have young horses that were started way too early and premature, you know, well, not premature, but arthritis developing in their spine at a young age. I mean, you see all kinds of things, stifle issues, hawk issues, so many different things. So as we start to play detective to find places where the horse can show specific feedback that there's pain, you have to remember it's not always just that one spot. If you imagine a string running through that horse's body that when you touch one spot, even though you may get a response from the horse, there are multiple other areas that are also affected and probably have been compensating for a certain amount of time, you know, however much when that pain is in there. So that's one aspect of it. Another aspect you have to remember is when these horses are in these hyper alert and defensive and fearful states, very often you will see that they have sleep deprivation, which again, if the horse is not laying down and does not reach the deep REM state of sleep, their whole nervous system is completely out of whack. Everything can become very overwhelming. You'll see very big and dramatic and what people will deem overreactive behaviors because that horse is so overwhelmed with for lack of sleep. You also have things like diet issues. Many times people are feeding what everybody else is feeding or what's convenient or what the barn is feeding. Doesn't always mean it's appropriate for the individual horse. Very rarely do people test their hay for quality 
in order to cater an individual diet to a horse that's maybe more sensitive or hypersensitive based on perhaps physical issues that he has. So that's another huge aspect. Another, you know, is dentistry and hoof care. There's so much that goes on. I could write a book on it, um, but that really affects whether it's pain or trigger points um, in how that horse is standing and then the rest of his body compensating in his jaw when he has dental issues and, you know, TMJ and all kinds of other things that go one that affect that horse's ability to focus, um, his constant state of pain, how his he's literally chewing and processing feed and not getting nutrients out of it. There's so many things that go on. And then as you start to do the body work and start to help these horses have physical changes in their body, you have to remember that the, the muscle memory is going to want to put that body back to how it's learned to compensate for whatever has been injured and protect itself. So it's a true mental and physical reconnecting and almost reteaching the horse how to think and physically be in the same place so that he learns to move again in balanced, soft quality movement. And then that's eventually becomes the norm. So I know people are excited talking about, you know, wanting to see videos and wanting to see progress. But what I have to stress here is every single horse that comes in is an individual case. There's no set program in how the horse is treated because we have to look at the individual and what their current state is as far as, you know, their mental availability towards human, as far as how they're dealing with their pain, um, how long the trauma has been there. And again, for a lot of these horses, the only things that I know about them is what they tell me through their physical behaviors and responses towards when I assess them. Um, and it really is amazing to see how much recovery can happen in so many horses, despite mental, emotional, and physical trauma. Um, and they really are looking to get to that safe place. But again, you have to remember if every single experience with humans has just reinforced either literal pain or induced a degree of fear, then that horse is always on high alert looking to protect himself. So the rehabilitation, there's no set time, there's no set program, there's no set schedule. It's all catered to the individual horse. And again, I recently posted a video of what it's like being a horse trainer and 30 years later, I never had any idea that I would get into this aspect of helping horses, but I started seeing decades into training so many horses that were continuously in pain and coming from professional facilities where saddle fit wasn't looked at, where basic health care wasn't looked at, that even though people were spending a lot of money thinking they were taking care of their horse, there wasn't individualized programs that were were appropriate for the individual horse. And so you start, you know, seeing these behaviors or the horses act, everybody is looking to try and contain the behavior or make the horse listen or make him comply versus learning how to slow down and recognize that the horse only has so many ways of asking for help. So thank you so much if you've, uh, you know, subscribed and you like the videos and check out some of the other ones. There's a lot of horses that have physical trauma. So if you're trying to learn and improve your eye and understanding of horse behavior, be sure to check out other videos and I'd love to hear your comments. Thanks, I'll see you next time.